Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafferke, starting a new series called Master Dimensional Modeling Step-by-Step. Step. We'll start with lesson one. Why do you need dimensional modeling at all? Where are we going? We'll start with what is the star schema? Why do you need the star schema? And what dimensional modeling is not? Then we'll wrap up. So this will be a pretty quick video. So this diagram you see is in fact a diagram of a simple star schema taken from the fact reseller sales in AdventureWorks, Microsoft's test data set. Now what you can see from this is that at the center of this model is our fact table, also known as our measures table, or at least it's a lot easier to understand it that way. And what we have there are the quantifiable facts related to the event known as sales. There's also things that we use to slice and dice and roll up our numbers like sales amount and quantity. Those things are called dimensions and they're in a separate table by type. So we can see we have a product dimension, a date dimension, reseller, and on and on. So when we want to get from our fact reseller sales in this case to say the product dimension, we have a foreign key, the product key, which is on that table, and that will allow us to join to the product key on the dimension table. Now the dimension dim product table actually has lots of different dimension attributes like product name, product category, and on and on. So when you think of the entire table, you call that a dimension, but the individual values you call dimension attributes. And we can also join to dim date, reseller, employee, and sales territory. And of course, there could be any number of dimensions that you might need. Now, a key takeaway I want to point out here, though, is we can get to any of the dimensions with a single join from the fact table. The measures I mentioned are what we're really interested in. We can see the order quantity, total product cost, and sales amount. Those are the things that we are really focused on, but it's meaningless unless we can organize it by the dimensions. To get to the dimensions, as I mentioned, we would use the foreign keys to connect us to the dimension tables. The result of dimensional modeling is in fact a star schema. The nice thing about the star schema is it provides an efficient and easy way to query data. It does trade off data redundancy to get more efficiency and speed, but also ease of use for the end user. As I mentioned, numeric measures, AKA facts, are at the center and it's typically called the fact table. Descriptive data is stored in the side tables here and they're called dimensions. The fact table has a foreign key to each dimension table and you can get to any dimension with a single join. We're minimizing the number of table joins needed because we've denormalized the dimension tables themselves so they have everything you could ever want in that dimension, but we don't need to join one dimension to another dimension to get more information, and that simplifies things a lot. So as I mentioned, this is really easy for end users to get the head around, to jump in and start being productive, and that's the goal of the star schema. Get the value out of the data right away. I will put a link in the description, but as you can see here, I have a video which covers dimensional modeling in quite a bit of depth. I do wanna contrast the dimensional model we just saw with entity relationship modeling. This is the equivalent ERM, entity relationship model, which is typically used for OLTP, transactional databases like in SQL Server or Oracle. As you can see, it's very complicated. There's lots of joins between things. This is not a spoke hub type schema where you have in the middle the central fact table and then all the things relate to it. This is all kinds of tables joining to everything else. The goal of entity relationship models is eliminating data redundancy as much as possible. They even have rules for it called normal forms. And the goal typically is to get to at least the third normal form in an OLTP model. We're not doing that here, so do not confuse the two. I also would be remiss if I didn't mention Data Vault. A lot of people talk about it. It's very promoted on Snowflake, not so much on Databricks, although Databricks can support it, but they serve different needs. So they're not in conflict with each other. If you use Data Vault modeling, it really has nothing to do with how you present the data to the business. So I'm gonna skip over that for now. However, I will provide a link in the description and I've also put it on the slide. You can get it from there as well, in which the Advancing Analytics channel discusses should you use Data Vault in a data lake or data lake house. So let's talk a little more about why we need the star schema. It efficiently supports many types of uses, reporting. In fact, Power BI recommends using the star schema data analysis, and of course, what's ever so popular now is machine learning and AI, and it really is a good way to get your data to the point it can be easily consumed and used by data scientists to do their model training. 
The straw schema is very flexible and highly extensible. It's one of the reasons I'm a big fan of it because you can just add in new attributes as you need to. You can extend the model to have new dimensions. You can create new fact tables at different levels of grain and then connect them to existing dimensions. So there's a lot of reusability in this as well. It's also data platform independent. It's important to understand that dimensional modeling is not a technology. It's just a mindset and a process which focuses on data reporting and analysis, making the data usable. So it's good in relational databases and has been there for decades, but it's also very applicable to big data platforms such as Databricks. And in fact, a link I'll also put in the description will take you to a blog in which Databricks tells you how you can apply the star schema to the Databricks platform. Snowflake is a little more interesting in that I can't find a lot of information about doing dimensional modeling on Snowflake. So I'll leave it to you to find that, but I can also not think of any reason you wouldn't want to do it on Snowflake or why Snowflake couldn't be used to do dimensional modeling and implement a star schema. A nice benefit of using the star schema is that it makes it easy to implement slowly changing dimensions. What are slowly changing dimensions, Brian? Slowly changing dimensions are history of changes in dimension values. So as an example, imagine you have all this sales information in your star schema, and then a customer moves from one state to another state. And let's assume you know, you're know you operating in the United States, so they move from say, Massachusetts to California. And it just so happens that in Massachusetts, you have a lot of stores and this customer did a lot of shopping because there was a store right down the street from where they lived. Suddenly, they moved to California and you notice they stopped shopping at stores and instead are doing online shopping through your e-commerce platform. Without knowing that this customer moved from one state to another, it could lead the business to the wrong conclusions or just leave them in the dark altogether. But if you know that they were in Massachusetts and stores were close to them, if you had their address, you could even know how close. When they went to California, there were no stores because it just happens you don't have any stores in California. So now they switched over to the online platform. That's very insightful and useful to the business. But if you just replaced the data in the dimension and did not keep history that they moved from one state to another, you would lose that. And that's really important to the business understanding the data. So what the star schema is not, it is not an enterprise warehouse approach. Bill Inman is a person who highly touted the idea of creating this monolithic central data warehouse as such. And everything you ever wanted to know in the kitchen sink would be in there and it was going to be perfect and pristine and everybody would be happy. Now, I have been in companies when that first came around and I remember the head of data in the company I was in saying, we're going to go to that. We're implementing an enterprise data warehouse. To my knowledge, it never happened because trying to take on something that big and large with so much complexity across an enterprise is very daunting and typically takes too long. So it's very much sort of like the waterfall approach where somebody says, well, we'll have this ready in three years. The business just can't wait that long. Now, admittedly, with the enterprise data warehouse approach, once you get it all there and everything you need is available, you can then start populating different data marts. So here's where I wanna contrast the Bill Inman approach to the Ralph Kimball approach. Ralph Kimball flips this around and says, start by building data marts, get value to the business as soon as possible. So you build a sales data mart, then you build a financials data mart and an inventory data mart. You're not trying to build an enterprise data warehouse. That's really crucial to understand because some people will critique the star schema saying you're trying to do that and you're not. Ralph Kimball was very smart because he does talk about trying to do things like conformed dimensions and conformed facts. So to the extent possible, he does provide methods that you're looking to be able to share dimensions across different data marts and fact tables as well. So wrapping up, we talked about what is a star schema and we learned that it is a really simplified data model that's awesome for the business to so just jump in and do any kinds of analytics, AI, or just analysis. Why do you need it? Well, for that reason, first of all, it gives you immediate business value. It eliminates a lot of the complexity that you would get with other modeling techniques and it's highly maintainable and extensible. Dimensional modeling is not trying to build a central enterprise-wide data warehouse. It actually starts at the bottom and builds data marts with the goal of getting some shared usability of the data across the data marts as a more long-term goal. And that's it for this time. Please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, I'm Paul and Foyer. We're all in this together. Thank you.